Hey everybody, welcome to the webinar. Thanks for joining tonight. I think people are still filing in, so we'll get started in just a minute. If you haven't been on one of these webinars with the new system yet, um, instead of a question area, there's a chat area. It's set to private right now, so anything you wanna ask or whatever is just sent to me. Um, so you can use that for questions as we go or at the end. It's best if you can kind of ask questions as we go, as you think of them. Um, gets more uh, to be more efficient towards the end. So how's everybody doing with everything going on, the whole situation and being locked down? I know it's affected pretty much everybody in some in one way or another. I thought this would be a good um, webinar to do right now since, well, things are kind of up in the air a bit in terms of, you know, where everything, what's going to happen. It's kind of just taking it day by day and week by week um, in terms of business and companies, um, you know, what they're going to do, what affiliate programs or what's going to happen to those, et cetera, et cetera. So now is a really good time to kind of, take an inventory or an audit of what you're doing and figure out how you could do it better, faster, more efficiently, uh, how you can outsource it if possible. Um, so anyway, that's what we're gonna go through. Oh, business is actually going better for someone. Oh, that's good, that's great. Can I ask, is the business, um, like what general industry is it in, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, getting into building social properties with socialpilot.co. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good tool to use. For sure, okay. Um, well, let's get started here. Let me try. Okay, let me share my screen and Okay, I'm assuming you guys can see my screen. If not, let me know. Um, this is the first time I've used this. Um, whoops. I usually use PowerPoint, but I'm just, um, got, I designed the slides in Canva or just make the presentation. So I'm um, presenting from there. I'm seeing if it works any better or different. So this webinar is gonna be about building workflows and systems and standard operating procedures and all these terms that more or less mean the same thing for our purposes anyway. Um, this is something that pretty much every business should do, even if it's just you as like a solo entrepreneur running campaigns or an authority site or whatever. Um, but this is something that's used, you know, all the way from big corporations all the way down and, um, there's a lot to unpack, but this is kind of going to be more of a how to get started in it kind of thing. It's not a super deep dive, but it, it doesn't really need to be to get what we need out of it. <laughs> so what are workflows and systems? So a workflow, a system, a business process, it, for our purposes anyway, it means the same thing. If you ever do like consulting for a big corporation or I don't know, you read their process documentation, those terms will mean something a little bit different like business processes are a little bit different than standard operating procedures. But it's I don't wanna go into that because it doesn't matter at all for, for what we're doing. So 
we'll get into exactly what they are in some examples, but anything you're currently working on has some kind of workflow or system to it, whether you've thought of it that way or not. You know, a system is just something that you do over and over, like the same tasks on the same types of projects, et cetera. The more you understand the systems you use and how you execute them, the more efficient you can make them. Uh, you can increase your efficiency and productivity quite a lot, really, if you're dedicated with this. So why do we care about these things at all? Okay, so pretty much, this is no surprise, but we're all limited by two things, which are time and money. We can't increase the number of hours in the day, unfortunately, uh, and we can't work 24 hours a day, and we don't have access to unlimited budgets. You know, it grows as you as you go, but those are the two kind of limiting factors. So in order to, say, build more projects or diversify your income, uh, build different income streams, revenue streams. The best bet is to work more efficiently and then eventually outsource some of that. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Outsourcing isn't necessarily the ultimate end game. It's just something you can do if you think it, you know, if it's something that you think you can outsource successfully and you want to do. Um, but at some point, you know, every project, you can only do so much of it, right? Whether it's, like I said, building campaigns or authority sites, you can only write so many posts or build and manage so many campaigns. So at some point, you're going to have to, you know, outsource or figure out something like that. Figuring out how you can optimize these workflows helps us manage both these things much more efficiently. You use your time a lot better. Um, more money hopefully eventually comes after that. I just wanted to talk really quick about why I think this is important, the systems. And I just want to say, if I say different things like systems or business processes or um, standard operating procedure, I mean the same thing. So. I was trying to use consistent language, but if you see me say something or hear me say something like that, just know that I mean the same thing. Just real quick, the reason I think that being working more efficiently and making things into a system as much as you can is, sorry, hold on one second. So anyway, um, becoming more efficient with everything you do gives you more time and energy that you can diversify, which if you've followed me for any length of time, you know I'm a big proponent of that, um, being diversified, different revenue streams, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> the way that I like to explain it, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> The way I like to explain how I think about diversifying is by thinking of a stock portfolio. I think you guys, I mean, everyone probably knows what I mean by that. <clears throat> you know, you invest in the stock market or you have somebody, a professional do it for you, and they invest in different stocks and different industries, right? <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying not to cough. <clears throat> Anyway, so they invest in different businesses and different industries, and that gives you a balanced portfolio. The idea is it protects you from risk. You know, if like one industry gets hit really hard, like travel right now, um, you know, your your whole in, your whole income or savings or whatever doesn't get completely wiped out. Um, you know, if you went to 
a professional, they wouldn't say, okay, dump all your money into this one stock or just this one industry, like, you know, travel or I don't know, you know, retailers or whatever. That's just not good practice. So think of the same thing with projects. And if you can free up more time, you can do, you can do more projects. Even if you don't diversify a lot, like even if you did 80% what you're doing now, and then you just took 20% of your, you know, time and resources to diversify, that's really good. I mean, that's better than, than most people do. And <clears throat> as an affiliate slash entrepreneur making money online, that's really the best way to protect your income from significant drops, uh, keep it consistent, and, you know, just make sure that things are safe and stable. The first step in getting started with this is to do an audit of your business. Um, <clears throat> by that, I really just mean looking at what you currently do, like not trying to, it's not about trying to sit down and figure out a plan of what you're, you're, you want to do, you know, ultimately, but just what are the processes you use now? Like say you are, you know, building a site, a authority site or blog or something. And you probably have certain things you do, right? Like uh, research keywords, write posts, um, promote them on social media. Every one of those things is a process and you can break it down into smaller and smaller steps. You know, like each step has multiple sub uh, tasks going on. So the, anyway, the first step is just to figure out like what you're doing now um, so as we go through this, just think of, uh, you know, just pick one project you're working on or, you know, one thing that, that you want to do, uh, and think about it this way and think about how this could potentially apply to, um, one of your projects or your whole business. So again, just to reiterate stuff on the left here, it all generally means for our purposes, just the steps you execute over and over in your business, like with an authority site you're going to constantly be publishing articles or content and there are steps you do to execute that so the stuff on the left that is what i mean when when i say and go through this to break things down so building systems it's really about you can do it in stages it's planning executing and then evaluating seeing if you can like improve those processes or if you can outsource any part of them or cut any of them. Um, sometimes you'll see a way that you can change a process to make it much faster or you notice you're doing things that you don't really need to do or it takes too much time. Um, that's really how you can get the most out of your time. I mean, I'm all for being productive and taskless and everything like that. But when it comes down to it, you know, you have to get, a little more granular with what you're actually doing and see, you know, where your time and resources are going before you can get really efficient and streamlined with this. So think of a project that you do right now. Um, you could call a project building campaigns, you know, building PPC campaigns or PPV or Facebook or, you know, building a website and think of what main tasks you do on those projects. You know, you can probably break it down. Um, there will be, I'll show you in a minute, a, a graph, but there are like main tasks you do. And then under those, there are steps that you do to complete those. Some tasks will be a, like a one-time thing. We're not so much worried about that. Like if you were gonna, you know, start a authority site, registering your domain name or building the site. I don't really count that as a, as a system, unless it's something you're doing over and over and over, then yes, but generally a lot of, a lot of things like that are just one-time things you don't really have to do this for. Um, defining your, what I'm calling core tasks are sort of the big picture, like the main 
pieces of or the main things that you do within a project. So let's, I'm just going to use an authority site example or a, a blog that I have. Um, what core tasks do I do to keep that running and grow it? So big picture stuff, I obviously write blog posts. Um, I use social media in various ways. I do keyword and competitive research, um, send an email news, you know, collect opt-ins, send email newsletter, and there's more, but I'm just using this for example purposes. So those are the core tasks. Then with each one of those tasks, you would break it down then into steps that you do to complete that task. So for example, the core task of writing blog posts, I could break it down something like this. Step one, uh, do keyword research, choose the focus keyword or keywords. Uh, and again, this isn't a lesson in doing keyword research. I'm not saying do it this way. It's really just an example. So anyway, step one, you know, keyword research, picking the keywords that I'm going to go after, uh, researching the competition, you know, looking at the sites, evaluating them, seeing what kind of content ranks well, what I think my best option would be, um, defining the topics and outlining the blog posts. Is it like a list style post, you know, here are nine ways that blah, blah, blah. Or is it a what is kind of post? Like, um, you know, what is the best vacuum cleaner? Or, you know, what is the best way to wake up early in the morning? Something like that. Um, <clears throat> and you can, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but you can actually break stuff like that down further, you know? So for example, the steps under this core task of writing blog posts, say defining and outlining the blog post and is it a list style or you know a what is post, I could create processes for those like okay for list style posts, these are the steps I always do. You know, I pick an odd number of things, I write a paragraph, you know, this long about each one. Um, these are the things I highlight. I use this many number of pictures. That's what most people that are really good or really successful with content marketing all the way from you know independent people like us through big corporations they have strategies like that so it's up to you how much you want to break down things i would start with the bigger things like we're talking about now but just keep in mind that you you can break down further so anyway <laughs> for just going on um, writing the post adding images uh, doing a spelling, grammar, edit check, publishing the post, and then um, posting links to social media. So does that make sense? And I would do that for each of the core tasks in number one here. So write blog posts, that's a core task. And below here is, are the steps that I do for that. Then use social media. I, would, I could break that down further, right? And publishing blog posts, what do I publish on the other days, where do I get the images, um, steps I do, same thing with keyword research and email newsletter, anything you do that's kind of like a main task of the project you're, you're going. Does that make sense? Okay, good, yeah. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask along the way. Oh, that didn't turn out too good, did it? Hang on. It really looked a lot better on my desktop, I promise. Um, okay, I think that's a little better. I don't know why it looked so crappy on the slide. Let me see. Can you guys read that okay? I'll have these, you can download the slides. Um, it'll be easier to see. It, at least for me, it helps to break things down visually and i'm not a big mind mapping person but i think for when you're doing stuff like this it makes sense to kind of break things down in this kind of way or you can do i mean you could do lists in excel or it doesn't really matter just whatever makes sense to um to you and how you do it <clears throat> so what this graphic represents is over here is the project and again, I'm using an example of an authority site that I run. Um, here in the light blue are 
what I'm seeing are the main tasks. They might be a little different than the last slide. It, again, it doesn't really matter, just an example. Um, so writing content is sort of a core task. My social media strategy, uh, link building. So those are things that the main things I do to say grow and promote my site, right? Then each one of those can get broken down further. Um, I only did it all the way into the writing content because I think you'll get the idea. But <clears throat> for the writing content, um, you guys can't read it. Um, hopefully that works. It gets a little blurry when I blow it up. I might have done something wrong here. Anyway, you guys can download this. Um, but anyway, so core task of writing the content. Then writing content is pretty broad, so I'm going to break that down a little bit more. What goes into writing content? You know, what I want to avoid is I don't want to sit down with, you know, staring at a blank WordPress page and go, okay, well, maybe I should look at a keyword and yeah, maybe I should do this. And, you know, two hours go by and you don't really have anything done. You want to get to the point where you're, you're really doing more executing than planning. Like you shouldn't sit, you shouldn't be sitting down and not really knowing what to do or having to think about what to do. Think of it, an analogy like, you know, the before you go to sleep you lay out the clothes you're going to wear for the next morning right you get up the next morning <clears throat> you don't have to go through your wardrobe and think if you're going to wear you know the cat t-shirt or the you know hawaiian shirt or whatever you just go to the place you laid your clothes out and you get them that's kind of what we're going for here so there is a phase that you know you'll do planning like this but it shouldn't be every time you sit down to do a process. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so breaking down the writing content core task, uh, one of the things I would do is keyword research. Obviously keyword research is kind of general, like what does that even mean? What steps do I do to find keywords I wanna write content about? So then I would break that down. Some examples, you know, research keywords, select 20 keywords, do competitive research, et cetera, et cetera. From there, you may or may not need to break it down further. If, if your ultimate goal or eventually you get to outsourcing a task like this, you would wanna break it down further and I'll show you how to do that later. But, um, cause if you, you know, hired someone and you gave them a process like this and you said, okay, well break this down and now you go research keywords. I mean, what does that, what does that mean? What are the steps that you take um kind of really like step by step imagine you're explaining it to someone who you know can turn on the computer but they're you know they they're starting from scratch basically um, if it's just for you you're mapping out the processes that you do you you might not need to break it down like that you might know exactly what keyword research means and you have a process but it is a good idea to write it down and see if everything in that process is efficient and worth doing. Anyway, um, another part of writing content would be actually writing the content, you know, writing the actual post. <clears throat> and you can break that down further, you know, outlining the post, and proofreading the certain images, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what I mean by doing an audit and breaking things down. Um, breaking them down far enough where to this point at least where like you understand exactly like if you get here say where these uh, top here on the keyword research if you get here but you're still you know like the way you go about researching keywords might be a little bit different or you're kind of you know not you're spending your time on different things or jumping around, you might need to break it down until you get a system that works for you. Because the idea is, again, it's just about execution. It's you don't want to sit there and like plan or, you know, test things right then. Later, you can go and evaluate and see, okay, is this the best way that I could be researching keywords or is there something, you know, better I can do? 
Hold on, I forgot water. Hang on. Okay, much better. Um, all right. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it, it'll make more sense as you write it out. You know, I'm not suggesting sit down and doing this all in one night. You know, it might take a few days or a weekend, but, and you'll probably think of more stuff as you go. <clears throat> So again, workflows are just a series of steps that you repeat over and over in your business to accomplish, you know, something something that you do. Um, here's an example, really basic workflow for writing and promoting a blog post. You know, write the blog post, edit, add photos, publish post a link to Facebook, post a link to Twitter. This is a little bit different than what I, the graph or the uh, mind map that I showed before. This is actually the execution part. So this is my plan. It's not, it's not breaking it down in individual steps. Um, <clears throat> Cause eventually you're gonna know what those things mean, like write blog post, edit. Um, so eventually your workflow will get to this point where it's it's fairly streamlined, but you know what you need to do. And again, <clears throat> depending on your needs or if you like hire people, you will need to break down some steps more than others. I'll give you some tips on working with employees though. <clears throat> Once your business processes are broken down like that into something where you know what your core tasks are and you kind of know the workflows underneath them that you go through it's time to document them you'll see people mention stuff like standard operating procedure workflow uh, business process again it all means essentially the same thing you don't need a fancy tool to do this, but I will show you something that I would highly suggest checking out. But anyway, <clears throat> to document them, I mean, you could really just use a paper, pen, and notebook if you wanted. But something like Google Docs, uh, OneNote, getting a little more specific. And what I would recommend is using something like uh, Notion, Slide, or probably ClickUp. ClickUp's probably the best overall that I, kn I know, and actually just in my opinion, for um, organizing most of what we're talking about here. But this is any tool that you use that is easy to navigate. You basically just want to document your workflow, exactly what you do, so you can start planning your execution plan. Let me see something, hang on. Um... Okay, I'll show that in a minute. But anyway, yeah, it doesn't really matter what you use. The idea is just to, to document it. So you have it for yourself. You can make sure that your workflow is consistent. That's another thing. You don't, again, you don't want to have this workflow that you, you kind of know what you're doing, but, you know, you just sit down and do it, and you might, I don't know, you might spend 20 minutes re researching keywords and, then you know you outline a blog post and you you just do different things every time which i will <laughs> totally admit i mean i do and everyone does but this is sort of the ideal you know it, you would you would have a pretty controlled process that you that you do every time you do say like keyword research um just because it's way faster to to do that you know again like um, choosing your clothes to wear in the morning. I mean, it's much faster just to grab the clothes you laid out than to thumb through your, you know, wardrobe or dresser or whatever. <clears throat> your um, business processes, they don't need to be perfect. It's just a starting point. 
and again, when you start to do this, it's you're you do, you're not doing what you want the process to be or what you think it should be. You're doing just what you're doing now. Um, and some of the stuff you might not really know, you can kind of approximate it, you know, like how you do keyword research or how you write a blog post or how you, you know, choose affiliate offers to promote. You want the process you're doing to be the starting point um, because then you kind of know what you need to change or add or subtract. From from there, anyway, <clears throat> once you start, once you see, you know, what your plan is and you can kind of start fine tuning it, you can plan out how you, how you do these things, how you execute them. One of my favorite things to do is batch tasks, you know, to make them faster. Have you ever had something you do like, I don't know, say you sit down and make a featured image for a blog post, right? Or build a landing page or something. <clears throat> Usually tasks like that, you sit down and you do a few and the more you do, the faster it gets, right? Cause you're just doing the same thing over and over and you get more efficient versus, you know, just doing it once, like every time, say you write a blog post, going back and then making the image it's much easier for certain tasks to batch them like that. Just do, you know, say two weeks worth of, you know, blog post featured images or something. <clears throat> there are probably things that you can easily cut out or automate. Not always, but there are usually ways. There's there are usually a few ways that you can cut things out or streamline them. And remember, because we're trying to be as efficient as possible or a lot of times we're going for the like 80 20 thing you know we want to we're not trying to be perfect in everything we're just we just want to get to the point where we're doing the most important things that are going to give us the best bang for our buck the best return on our money and not going that extra you know 20 percent or whatever it is because it's going to take a lot of time and energy and not give you enough in return. <clears throat> this is also how you can evaluate if and when you should outsource anything. If there's something that is a repeatable task, like, you know, like I just said, making blog posts, featured images, or making a bunch of Pinterest graphics, um, <clears throat> that would be something that you could potentially outsource. It's not bad use of your time when you're starting out, but you know, eventually that's not what's really earning you a lot of money. I mean, it's probably for this example, it's gonna be writing better content and building links and stuff. <clears throat> so some of the other things are definitely worth outsourcing. The best things to outsource are the things that you can really break down into step by step. And I do mean like step by step. <clears throat> Successfully outsourcing, the biggest thing is to make sure that they have, okay, let me think how I wanna say this. Outsourcing works best on things that can be really broken down into step by step stuff. You don't wanna, depending on who you hire, I guess, but generally speaking, you don't want to hire someone to do things that are really open to interpretation or research. Like, say you have, you know, part of your, your workflow is like researching competitors. And, you know, maybe when you do it, there's, there's stuff that you do a little bit different each time. And it's kind of hard to document exactly what you are looking for. Cause there's a lot of different factors. So if you hire someone and just say, okay, you know, research competitors, this is kind of what you're looking for. That's too open-ended. It should really be something that's like step one, open this program. Step two, you know, use these graphics, this dimension, step three, save it, blah, blah, blah. Something that, you know, you could literally hand someone a document and they would know exactly what to do. Those are the things that 
I find are easiest and most successful to outsource. Another reason that this stuff is, is so important, the documentation, is because when you outsource, um, you're going to spend a lot of time onboarding people and training them in what to do unless you have something like this in place that cuts down dramatically on the time you have to spend doing those things. You don't, the idea of outsourcing ideally is that you want to free up that time so you can do other stuff, build more projects, diversify different revenue streams. Um, so yeah, that, that that's kind of, I think you get my point there. <clears throat> you also need to plan not just how you do these things in the steps, but you need to plan when you do them, kind of like a timeline or a calendar. And this is a huge part of doing this whole thing we're talking about really successfully is not just having them done and kind of going, okay, well, I guess today I should maybe do this. And oh, I think I left this over here to do. You have to be as organized as possible. Um, some people like to break things down into very small details. Some people like more of a big picture thing. Try each one and see what works for you. Don't just try it for a day or something, you know, give it a few weeks or a month or two, and then you can, you know, change or adapt it as needed. Again, I said you can use pretty much any tool you want, but I'm going to show you one called Process Street, I guess, process.st, that I think is, it's a really good tool, but what makes it so good is the way that it's organized and the explanations they give and kind of the, the training they give. It's really, really good for learning how to document and think about, you know, developing processes and workflows. Um, <clears throat> they do have a free plan. It's not like, I don't think it's a secret, but it's not really advertised. If you go there, it's going to look like you have to pay for it. Um, but you just sign up and then when the trial runs out, you're on the free plan, essentially. You don't need the paid plan. If at some point down the line you really need that, then you can, but there are other free tools that do that do the same thing that Process Street does, but they don't really offer the same kind of explanation and onboarding. So this is you guys can see this, yeah. This is Process Street. Um Let's get in here. So essentially, I would um, I would go through and I would read the blog posts, all the help sections. Um, but even when you use it here, let's well, let me start from the beginning. So I'm logged in here. Um, I'm going to develop a new process. I'm gonna or document it, and I'm gonna look for a template just to start, so we can kind of see how this works. Okay. Um, let's look for one that is similar to what we've been talking about. Um, this is this kind of stuff though, business process and automation, it's huge. I mean, they just, what got, oh, they don't have it here, hold on. You just got some, Series A funding or like a bunch of investment. I don't know. But anyway, this is big business, this kind of stuff. Um, let's say, how about, well, we'll just go, we'll go back because this is how you would select one, but I had some uh, in particular that I wanted to show you. So these are the processes. Now this is, it's kind of a couple things going on here with Process Street. It's not just about documenting um, your processes. After you do that, <clears throat> the idea is that you run a checklist. So essentially like this over here is the process, okay? Pretend that I'm hiring you guys to create a newsletter, okay? Or you're hiring an employee, or even you're just trying to you know, streamline your own work process. This is just a template here. 
um, each section here has things that you do in order. So essentially you're, you know, it's your documentation, you're showing someone how to do this stuff. Um, some of it would be kind of like a knowledge base, not a knowledge base. Some of it would be like lessons, like, okay, here's how you run spell check, um, proving content, uh, peer removal, and then publishing the newsletter. Here are the steps, logging into MailChimp, you know, here's the login info. Um, how detailed do you think you need to go with breaking things down, like, you know, creating the newsletter and stuff? Really, when you're outsourcing, <clears throat> I really want to stress this. You cannot break stuff down too much. I mean, literally, if you can do, like, where was that here? Literally, if you can do stuff like, um, trying to, okay. If you can do stuff like, you know, this arrows, click here, right here, do this, you'll save yourself so much time. Um, I see people outsource all the time and there's two main reasons that they, two big reasons that they fail, like pretty much across the board. Number one is not knowing your workflow well enough yourself. So you know that say, I don't know, you're researching keywords, right? <clears throat> and you hire someone to do that and you kind of have like, okay, you know, log into Ahrefs and, look for some keywords with this much search volume, but it's not super specific. So they end up coming back to you like, well, what about when I see this? And you don't know because you don't know your process very well. So you have to stop and think, okay, well, I don't know, I guess maybe try this. And that goes back and forth and back and forth. And you end up <clears throat> spending a lot more time, um, then you get and then you get back from outsourcing. So that's the number one thing is just not really having specific directions for them to follow. And number two would be not breaking things down enough. Kind of the same thing, I guess. Um, but anyway, yeah, as much as you can document it, some good things that you can use are like snag it. Um, actually, let me oh, it's already running. Okay, okay. Um, so shoot, I wasn't planning on doing this. So let me make sure if I get it right. So with Snagit, you can, uh, create, you can create kind of visual, um, workflows. Like you can take screenshots of the processes that you do, or even better, maybe screen recordings. Well, I don't know. Images might be better because you don't have to wait through the video, but you know, as step-by-step -step as you can go, like here's this screen, here's what you do on this screen, here's the next screen, here's what you do on this screen. I know I'm going on about this, but it's super, super important to outsourcing for one, but also just getting your own system, you know, so you don't have, the idea is you don't want to have to stop and think about what you're doing a lot. <clears throat> There's a time for doing that, which is now when you're, when you're making this, but then you want to move into the execute role. Uh, this sounds really ominous. <laughs> you want to move it, you know, you want to be the person that sits down and boom, 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 you carry those out kind of without thinking kind of on autopilot. Okay. So anyway, the other part of, hold on a second. The other part of Process Street and some of the other tools that do this is when you run a checklist, it can automate sending tasks to different departments. Like say um, editing the newsletter was Bob's job, right? And the person that's, you know, Bob is doing this and checking these things. Oh, I have to run the checklist to do that, but they're checking things off as they do them. And then once they finish this, you know, part here and they get to publishing the newsletter, the system here automatically sends the, um, the tasks or the project to your other employee who's in charge of publishing the newsletter. 
and they do the process, you know, and check things off. And then it gets sent, I don't know, back to Bob or sometimes one person just does the whole process. But the idea is you can see when the processes were run. You can know, um, you can see like if people get stuck on a certain part or where the bottleneck is, you know, is Bob not getting through this part fast enough? Um, you can also use it to do more of like a bird's eye view planning. You know, you can look and you can see, okay, this is where people are at certain certain parts of this project. Here's where they are on, you know, this project or task. So anyway, I would suggest um, just really playing around with Process Street. You don't have to use it to the full extent of what it does. I just think it's a really, I think it's a fantastic way to learn about doing processes um, and kind of what what it all entails. And again, this goes all the way up to, you know, huge corporations with thousands of employees that, you know, it's, stuff is bouncing around in all these different departments. You're not necessarily going to take it that far, but it's still just as valuable, you know, to us and um, learning how to document and think about things. So again, play with the templates. Um, it's kind of fun and you will learn a lot. Um, yeah, and read the help section in the blog and the newsletter. Okay. <clears throat> Again, as you outsource or you hire one employee or more, um, whether it be temporary or you have a VA that, you know, works with you on a monthly basis, uh, stuff like this really becomes essential if you want to make the most of your time. Again, we only have so much time in the day and limited by budget too, so our best chance of really scaling things is finding ways to make our workflow more efficient and freeing up our time. I will say too, one thing, <clears throat> kind of a side benefit of doing this, I guess, but it's really a, a big benefit is kind of freeing up your mind to work on other things. <clears throat> I heard or read something a while ago that Mark Zuckerberg, he has, I don't know, the same shirt that, he, you know, same style and color of shirt or something that he always wears. Um, and the idea was something about, he said, um, you know, he makes so many decisions during the day and in charge of so many things that the more he, the more things he can just not think about and just execute the better. And that was one example that he did. So if you get to the point where you're really just, you know, running a, a checklist and you know exactly what to do and you get faster and faster at the process, you don't have to think about it so much, really. You're almost just kind of like a robot executing it. And that's a really good time to outsource because if you can do that, someone else can. But anyway, it, fr it really does free up your mind because um, you're, not, you're not constantly thinking about what you're doing or you know, if you're doing the right process or doing the right thing. So another, another side benefit of that. And again, this saves a ton of time with onboarding employees and just getting more done in general. Um, onboarding VAs or anybody you hire, it can be a time consuming process. So the more you have documented, the more you can just say, okay, here's the answer to this. Look in, you know, at this page or go back through this process kind of thing. Most project management tools that you use like ClickUp or Asana or whatever, I don't know if most, but many of them have some kind of automation system in place. Uh, they, might call it different things, but essentially it's just like, you know, Bob does one thing and then assigns it to Sally who works on the next part of it, that, that sort of thing. So again, an example of that kind of automation is our, our guy Bob who writes blog posts. 
<clears throat> we have another employee, Jane, who edits them and then publishes them when he's done. So the way a lot of people work is, and this could be between you and an employee too, or just you yourself, you know, think, think of all the situations this could cover. But anyway, a lot of the way a lot of people work is they'll use, I don't know, Slack or Skype or whatever, and they'll just message back and forth. So, you know, Bob will send Jane a message and say, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm about done with this. So you can take it over, you know, whenever, um, the project manager doesn't necessarily know what phase, you know, that task is in. Um, Jane might forget that, you know, Bob finished it. Bob might forget to tell Jane. Um, so that's a really inefficient way to work. It's much better. And you can do this manually too. It doesn't have to be automated, but you can do it where like say Bob finishes his task and then he can manually assign it to Jane. You can do a system like that, or you can do just when he completes the project in the project management software, it gets sent to someone else. I think also that it's, well, in my opinion, it's important to have some kind of knowledge base or wiki for your team or yourself. This gets more important as you hire more employees, but it's really not a bad idea, even if it's even if it's just you. Because I know I do a lot of different things, but some I might not work on for a while. Um, like, okay, for me, an example was podcasting. I did a podcast episode the other day that was like the first one in a few years. So I wanted to get back into that. And I used to have it down, you know, to a, a good process. But when I went back, I was thinking, okay, how did I record this? And how did I, you know, save and upload and all this stuff? So, I, you know, I figured it out, but I did have to look a few things up and search Google and then, oh, okay, I remember that. If I would have had some kind of, knowledge base or even just a document in place and i could have saved probably a few hours just executing that so it's what i'm saying is even if it's just you i think it's still a good idea to have those kind of things documented just so you don't have to like go back through them again and again um you can also create a onboarding process or just a document to get people up to speed with what they'll be doing as a solo entrepreneur you can use it for you can create a template and just apply it to the next project you do because you're going to want to document that so a lot of the templates that you make you know it's like say you do another authority site we well, are going to do keyword research pretty much the same way probably um but if it's not keyword research, you can, you know, adapt that document to whatever the next thing you're doing. I'll show you a couple um, options that I think are good, but don't get too bogged down in tools like I have a really bad habit of doing. <clears throat> There's no best tool out there. I guarantee that because I have probably wasted time looking at all of them. I don't have a process for that. See, that's what the problem is. Um, a couple that I would look at are slight.com or notion.so. I'll show you those really quick. Um, and, and again, you don't have to use these. I'm just kind of showing you examples of tools that I think are good. Um, Notion is free. They do have a paid um, version. I don't know what you get, but it's kind of a, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. I guess it's, it's kind of in between a project management system and a wiki slash note-taking app. If you guys ever used um, OneNote or Evernote, it's kind of like that combination of that and a wiki and project management. You can do a lot, but you have these different workspaces. Um, you can do different, um, you can do different templates. Like here is a Kanban board. This is actually, do you guys, have you guys ever used the Kanban method? Do you know what I'm talking about with that?
It'd be cool if there's a button you guys could just click like yes or no and do a vote thing. Yeah. Okay. Con so Kanban is another really good way to, um, a, a good and simple way to go through workflows. I don't have this set up I'll, in a minute. I'll show you the other tool and an example of that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so Notion, here's a template, a wiki template. You, you know, you get the idea. It's just basically like um, a document of how you do things or, you know, a wiki and there's all these different sections. So if you have an employee, you can point them here like, okay, hey, all the knowledge you need and all the answers to your questions are in here. You can even use this for the workflows. Again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and you can also use it just to document, you know, your your own stuff. You could use it for anything you want, really. It's really um, adaptable. Uh, Slight, I have not played with as much, but it's a pretty popular tool among um, uh, bigger corporations, I guess. It's it's similar to um, to Notion, uh, and again, with Notion or any of these tools I'm showing you, you would share. Um, like your employees or whoever you're working with would have obviously a login to that. And that's kind of how you collaborate and share information. Um, but anyway, I would check this out. It's, it's pretty cool. It's free. Um, it's probably a little better and clearer of a documentation tool than notion is. Um, did I close notion? I, I don't know, just to me, it's a little bit, but Notions is like more flexible. Ultimately, it really just comes down to how you work and you know uh, what you wanna what you wanna do. <clears throat> I'll also show you a um actually, will I? Well, I'll just I'll just show you this. No, I won't. I changed my mind. I'll show you that in a minute. So the whole thing that we're talking about tonight with breaking, breaking down processes and everything, I would do this if it's even just you. Um, it's a great way to know like what needs to be done, what phase of each project or task you're at. You know, say you're doing keyword research and you finish it and then, I don't know, your kid is crying and you have to you have to stop. Well, when you go back to the computer, instead of, you know, trying to catch up for 20 minutes and remember what you're doing, you can just go back to your checklist or your process and pick up right from there. I can't stress how much time this can really save. I mean, I'm sure everyone has the the experience of, you know, you sit down and on the computer and then all of a sudden two hours are gone and you're like, what did I even do in that? Um, time, <laughs> unfortunately, goes really fast, uh, but you can make it so much more uh, you can become so much more proficient at these kind of processes. So anyway, here's where I'm going to show you ClickUp. Yeah, so that's a good question. I'll answer that right now. So ClickUp is a project management tool. Um, it's, I think it's, it's really good. Um, the, the one thing I can say about it is it's, I don't want to say it's complicated, but you do have to be patient and learn it just because there's a lot you can do with it. So it's not something really simple like Trello. Have you guys ever used Trello? It's just a really simple um, board kind of thing like this. But anyway, <clears throat> ClickUp is a project management tool, but it can also do all the stuff that I'm I'm talking about tonight, actually most of it, most that we'd care about. Um, and a couple of those things are really new. I haven't played around with them much, but they do have these new um, automations. You can see it's in beta and it's kind of along the lines of what I was talking about where you run a checklist and it might get assigned to different departments or you know, maybe you have a task that you do and then you need to wait X amount of days before you do the next part, you know, you can have that all scheduled and know when things are done and where. It does um, have a documentation feature too. 
again, there's a lot you can do with it. I'm not, I won't dig into everything. This is a template right here. Uh, there are different ways you can view it. This is uh, uh, the list view. Um, this is the board view. This is what I was talking about with the Kanban idea. The way this works is <laughs> pitch idea on Shark Tank. Um, the way this works is you have these different boards, so you know uh, like what stage these tax tasks are in. So say this is just me working on it. Okay, I go on Shark Tank and I pitch my idea. You know, so that's in progress. Um, I don't know what review would be, but anyway, and then you get to the point where you're you complete it. So everyone working on the project can see what's done and what needs to be done. Um, you can do so, you know, you assign it to different people. Uh, so for example, I can look on here and I can say, oh, I know that I need to do this. So I start it and then whoever I'm working with can log in and see, okay, that's in progress. So, you know, instead of like, it really cuts down on that back and forth communication. Like, hey, did you do this? Or like, can you remember where we left off with this? And that really, really just, I don't want to say waste time, but it's it's not the best use of, of time. Anyway, there's a lot more you can do with it. Um, the calendar view is also really helpful. I mentioned a calendar earlier, and this is where you can, you know, document maybe, or not document, but you can put all your tasks like, I don't know, maybe Tuesdays are the days you write blog posts and Wednesdays are the days you schedule your social media posts or whatever. Um, I wanted to show you one thing, but I'm worried that I won't be able to find it. Uh, there... So obviously I don't use this every day. I use um something called uh, I can't remember what it's called. I use um, teamwork projects. It is the thing I found with project management tools is they're all pretty much the same thing really, and it really just depends on which one kind of clicks with you um some like like that's kind of the downside of ClickUp. when it started out it was really simple but it just got it just they release a lot of new features which is really good and they're good features but they release them so often that it's hard to keep up with everything so good and bad um i like teamwork just because i don't know it works with my brain in the way that it it organizes things but anyway <clears throat> um with ClickUp, you they do have a document thing where you can do the same thing, you know, document processes and workflows and you know all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, all right, I think that was mostly it. Um, those are the main things that I wanted to talk about, and I be happy like if you guys you know get started with this and you have questions about it feel free to email me or um yeah email is probably the best but uh there is one of those things that you know it's it's fairly straightforward to do but it's something you fine tune as you go i mean you're not going to get it perfect it's kind of a always evolving thing you're going to find better ways of doing things or you're going to change something you do you know maybe you decide you research keywords the different way that you learned or you know something like that okay all right any questions on this uh, a couple of questions about links i'll make these slides downloadable um, and you guys can go to all of them. Um, the link for the service with documented steps, I think it was process.st. Um, but again, yeah, yep, that's it, process.st.
Yeah. And again, I mean, you could, you could really do all of this with, you know, word or Google docs. It, it doesn't need to be complicated. It's probably better to start as simple as you can and grow from there. You know, you won't need every single function that, that everything does. Um, but I think, I think the best thing that I could tell you after, or the most helpful thing is after going through this and thinking about it, do spend some time on process.st. Uh, you don't need the paid plan and I don't have it. I wouldn't recommend getting it unless you have a specific need for it. <clears throat> and it's, the reason I think it's really important is not so much just what it does. I mean, it is cool and it's organized well, but the way they show you how to build workflows and systems, it's, they did a really great job with the documentation and the onboarding and stuff. So you'll, you'll learn a lot. Um, just remember that every, everyone's workflow or system or standard operating procedure is going to be a little bit different. So don't try to, if you see one that say they recommend or whatever, don't follow it rigidly. You know, you're going to adapt it to how you work and it's going to change and evolve. So Nate Hirsch, founder of freeup.net, use Google Docs only. Yeah, there's um, a lot of people who either, you know, don't use many tools or just use the simplest method um, possible, which I, I agree with. Yeah, if you can do it, the more you can, it's, you know, the more you can cut out, the less you have to think about things. Like that was the reason that I, left click up. I, I still think it's good and I still recommend it, but just for me, I don't know something about maybe just the way my brain works. I spent too much time trying to remember where things were in menus and different views and stuff. And, you know, it wasn't like I spent five hours trying to find what I needed, but those little things do add up, you know, over a week, I might've spent five hours, just little things, you know, if I'm using it day in and day out and you know, I'm kind of trying to remember where things are, or how they're organized. Um, anyway, little things like that can really add up. Uh, when do you start documenting at the start of a new idea project or once you're confident it makes you profits? I would start documenting right away. At first, it's, it's just going to be really simple, but it also gives you a really good frame of reference. So, you know, you started here, right? And then maybe like you say, you know, the project isn't making money at first. Well, you can look at your process. What am I doing? Am I doing something that should be re totally replaced or rewritten? Or is there something that's not working? Um, instead of just you know, because the alternative is you do a project and it's just not converting and, you know, kind of in your head. And I'm guilty of this, too. In your head, you go, well, I, I don't know, maybe the, it's just the niche doesn't convert or something. You kind of lose interest in the site. But you very well, and I could very well pass up um, good opportunities just because, you know, you don't sit down and really think through things. So anyway, to answer your question, I would document it at the start. Don't go crazy again the idea isn't to document what you like the end goal you want to do so if i was just starting a site i'm not going to sit down and document every single step and how i want to do it um, maybe if i've done the project before i can kind of use my my documents from that as kind of a jump start but i just want to document it as i go does that make sense so it's just going to be really simple at first and then as you're growing the site and building you'll you'll add to that sure but i again the reason i wanted to do this webinar i think right now is a really good time to do this it's just such a i don't know just unprecedented situation really i mean we've never lived through something like this and a lot of things are up in the air and will probably remain that way for a long time. Um, well, for the foreseeable future, like, you know, like someone said, 
on the webinar here, their business was up. Um, so a lot is down, like travel bloggers got hit super hard, as you can imagine. Um, a lot of them are saying, you know, like 80% of their income just poof, <clears throat> which is another really good reason to be diversified. Um, you know, even if you're not putting a ton of effort into another project you're doing, you know, even like 10, 20% or whatever, it really adds up and time goes so fast. You look back in a few months and you go, okay, I'm glad I, you know, spent those few hours a week um, doing this. Yeah, not in the 40 years in this country in my 73 years of life. Yeah, it's really just, like I say, it's just unprecedented. Um, and it's kind of a mess. You know, everyone's obviously really stressed out. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> the, the point of doing this is that I think um, – it's a good time to kind of take a step back and take an inventory of what you're doing, uh, do an audit of what you're doing and see where you can improve um, as, you know, see where things go. Um, you know, like Amazon just cut their affiliate commissions in a bunch of categories pretty drastically. Um, and that's going to affect a lot of people. So we don't know what different changes are going to come, but I will say that, you know, as affiliates or you know people doing various projects online that make money we're still in a really good position because we can do so many different things that's the real benefit of being diversified and having different types of projects and different niches um, is that when something like this happens and again it's never happened to any of us um, before and hopefully it won't again but you know your things do happen and you'll be you'll be diversified a sporting company equip sporting equipment company client of mine raised sales by 500 percent for the last 30 days so people are stuck at home and want to spend time in their backyards and play together keeping their bodies in good shape yeah that's that's a good example um yeah, traffic is way up on some sites uh, for I me mean, specifically. Um, revenue is kind of a, a little all over the place. Um, some of it's down, some of it's up. Um, some of it in categories like the, the last um, comment that I just read, categories that are, um, what do I want to say? Not like distraction, but something like that. You know, like what are people going to do it at home uh, or by themselves when there's not really, you know, they're not working or they're out of work or whatever. Um, sporting equipment, you know, maybe something like video games. Um, I don't know, books. There's all there's all kinds of stuff. Um, cutting commissions after they make a sale for products. Uh, what do you mean by that? I'm not quite sure what the is. Oh, that's interesting. Let's look at this. Someone sent this in the chat here. What is this? Um, do you know? what data this was taken from. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting. I wouldn't, I'd want to know where this data came from before I would um, be much with it. The thing to, to, to understand is, again, nobody, we've never been through this before, so nobody really knows what the short or long-term effects or outcomes are going to be on different um, industries. I, I'm personally, and I wouldn't recommend, you know, completely switching strategies or something, at least not right now. Um, you know, so if you were starting a travel site, you know, still do that. I mean, people are going to travel again, or, you know, if one of these is down, like, I don't know, um, 
real estate or something, you know, it might be a really good time to build up something like that. Something you know that's going to come back. Uh, original URL. Okay. Let me see where this data is coming from. So. So it's uh, it's clients from his agency, I guess. So yeah, that's yeah, that's from his agency. So that's interesting. Um, with anything, whether it's this or whatever, you'll see charts and stats and everything. But just remember, like everyone's business is affected differently. Like you know, the thing we've you've probably heard me talk about before or when I've talked to you guys about it is two people can do the same thing and just have completely different results. That's just part of online marketing that sometimes there just isn't a reason you can, you can, um, there isn't always a reason you can find uh, sometimes, you know, there's just, there's so many factors that go into different things. At some point you just have to go, okay, well that worked for this person. It doesn't work for me. Um, so all I'm saying is if you see something like, oh, never again, write about, you know, traveling or something, take it with a grain of salt, because again, everyone will be different. For example, um, I know some sites that are about traveling, but more about like posting pictures and videos and stuff and traffic to those sites are up, even though they were monetizing with like say travel programs or whatever, people are still going to those because they can't travel. So they're kind of virtually traveling, you know, looking at the pictures and the videos. Um, and of course you can monetize that with other stuff. Um, yeah. Would you say it's better to be diversified in different product categories or in different business strategies? So kind of both. Like, um, tell me if this is kind of what you mean. So if you're doing, say, like PPC campaigns, right, and say you're doing them in the health niche, just for example, I'm not saying do that. Uh, so you're running PPC campaigns in the health niche and then – you might diversify by running some in the auto niche, right? That's like kind of different, different niches. You're kind of still doing the same thing, but in different niches. I think that's a good kind of first step. So I wouldn't be, it's kind of going back to the stock thing. Like say you were investing in retail, right? And you invested, you know, part in retail and, well, actually no, scratch that but I'm confusing myself. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's a good first step to diversifying, you know, doing different, say, niches or types of products. But I would still diversify um, on a little bigger scale than that. So say you are doing really well with that, and you really need to put like 80 to 90% of your effort to that. Well, that's cool, but I would still, um, you know, do something else, like build, a, I don't know, a content a curated content site or a, you know, Facebook page or a, I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can do, but yeah, the idea is you do want to do things that are kind of completely insulated from each other. If that makes sense. So diversified in different projects, different types of projects in different niches. I think that's important. Because uh, online, I mean, so many things can change. Like, um, you know, a traffic source can stop accepting certain kind of advertisers or, you know, a certain industry gets hit really hard and might not come back for a while. So the more you're diversified away from, uh, diversified in different things, the less of a hit you take when something like that happens. And it, it will happen. Stuff, you know, does happen. Cool. Any other questions? And again, I'll post a replay and I'll email you guys when it's ready. I'm just going to post it on the blog. Um, but yeah, I would give this stuff a try. I think it's a really good time right now to go through and kind of audit your business and see 
where you can free up some time to do other projects and where you can optimize the projects you're doing and make them more efficient, um, outsource if necessary. Um, I think this is a really important part of business. I would really encourage you to, to do this. It's kind of hard and different at first to stick to because you have to be pretty consistent and, you know, do the work, which is hard sometimes when you're self-employed, but it's a kind of an evolving process. It's something you're aiming for and working towards. And, and I think that's, you know, good enough. So yeah, you guys are welcome. Thanks for joining tonight. I appreciate it. And if you get stuck with anything here, uh, shoot me an email. I'm happy to give you some pointers or, or talk about things in your specific situations. So I hope you guys are safe and stay that way and uh, your businesses continue to, to do okay. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. Thanks again for joining. Talk to you later.